In the last video, we built a simple circuit using a battery, a resistor, an LED, and a switch, and of course a breadboard to hold everything together. And we saw it actually working. The LED can come on when the switch is toggled on and off. But now what we were sort of up against now is every time we want to discuss a circuit, we can't always build it. And so we might want to start drawing the circuit. So let's just take the circuit off for a minute right here and look at how it might be drawn. One way we could probably, probably draw it is like this. We could literally draw the pieces the way we see them on the circuit board. We could try to draw a square 9 volt battery label at 9 volts, put a couple terminals on it. We could draw some wire coming out and going into something that looks like a resistor here, the cylindrical thing. And I suppose if we wanted to, we could draw color bands on here or even label it. And we could show the, that what the current would flow out into the LED here. I've tried to emphasize the flat edge right there. Then it goes on into a switch, so I've tried to draw a big boxy switch with a handle on it like that. And then it goes on back to the 9 volt battery. But unfortunately, this just isn't the way circuits are drawn. It's kind of messy. It uses up too much space. It's not very efficient. And plus, everyone's going to have slightly different variations about how they might draw a 9 volt battery or a resistor or an LED. So it'd be hard to get sort of any standardization going in terms of how the circuit looks. So what we need to look at then in this video here so we can communicate our electronic ideas better is when you look at electronic schematics, as they're so-called. So of course schematics is a means of drawing of something that is supposed to represent. So in this case, the schematic will be of uh, an electronic circuit, so an electronic schematic here. So just a couple of symbols here, the way things are going to be put together. The first thing that we'll need is a battery, the symbol for a battery, which is going to look something like this. So this symbol right here, this is what we use whenever we want, we want to refer to a battery. It doesn't matter what type of battery it is, 9 volt, 1.5, you know, an automobile battery, it doesn't matter. We'll always draw a long edge like this, a shorter edge, and these are where the connections are going to be right here. And electrons convention tells us that the longer edge here is always going to be the positive terminal of the battery, and the negative edge is always going to be the negative. The smaller edge is always going to be the negative side of the battery. So if we look at the 9 volt here, there is that positive sign on the 9 volt. So this is indicating that the battery would have to be inserted something like this right here so that the positive term was on that longer edge right there. And of course wire is just going to be a straight line like that. Wherever we want to draw a resistor because we know resistors have the, that, that hard path for electrons to travel through as we discussed in a previous video here. So resistors are going to always have a zigzag shape like this. It's going to look something like this. just indicates a very difficult path for charge to flow through. A switch will be something like this. I think we drew that in a previous video. And so it just sort of implies that there can be flow along these pieces of wire here, but whenever there's a gap like this, nothing can flow. And it sort of implies that if this piece is sort of pushed down like this, then the circuit will be closed and the current can flow. And indeed, some switch schematics even have that arrow on it like that. So see, there is no schematic for a breadboard even because it just implies things are going to hold together. The LED is sort of a tricky one like this. It's going to look something like this where we see the two leads of the LED like that. The circle around sort of implies it'll be an LED and sometimes you even see these things with little squiggly lines coming out like that indicating that light would come out and the arrow always points in the direction of flow of the LED. So this arrow here would be in the direction of the flat edge of the LED as we described in the, in the previous video right here. So there'll be the LED. And that's about all we're going to need for right now. This will just take us quite far. We'll introduce more schematic symbols as it goes. Or you can look online maybe to find a more complete list of these things here. But let's just draw a couple more in there. In particular, whenever you see something like this, with a V through it, this means a meter that's been set into volts mode. So this can, I'm going to literally call it a voltmeter and emphasize this point that it's a voltmeter that's been set into volts mode. Now we've seen some other videos that voltage and current and resistance are not the same thing. So this is a meter that has been properly configured with its jacks and its setting to measure voltage. And likewise, whenever you see a schematic symbol like this, this is going to mean ammeter. So this is again, is a, measure, a meter that's been set up properly to measure amps or current. So it's not just that it's been set in there, but the jacks are in the right positions, the knobs in the right positions, and the circuit's going to assume that everything's all set up and ready to measure these quantities here. So again, we'll have more schematic symbols as it goes out, but these are the pieces we need to start drawing our circuits. So why don't we just erase these here, nice as that list was, <clears throat> and draw out that last circuit we built, the way it would look like in true electronic schematic form. Remember, we had the battery here. Then the battery went up into the resistor like this. 
and that fed the LED like this. See the LED drawn in there. There's the LED like that. And that went over to a switch like this. And that completed the circuit. So this is the proper electronic schematic of that last circuit. All clean with very standard symbols. And what you can do, you know, initially, again, to uh, make it even more clear about what you need here, is you can go ahead and label the components in here. So that was a 9 volt battery right here. In the circuit, this is a 100 ohm resistor. This was an LED right here. And I used a blue LED, but you can sort of put whatever color you want on there. But if you really want people to know exactly what you did, you can label the color of the LED here. You can label this switch here, although that's probably not necessary. And the rest are just implied that they're wires. So it's neat, standardized, and that's how we would communicate that last circuit that we built.